Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. This is going to be part four of the series, The Day of the Lord versus The Day of Christ. We're going to look at every single verse, chapter in the Bible where it says the day of the Lord or the day of Christ. This is, turn your Bibles, King James or Geneva preferably, to Jeremiah chapter 46. Like I said, this is going to be part four. A little bit of background. Israel and Judah used to be under King David and Solomon as a combined kingdom. After Solomon died, his son took over, and over taxation, the northern tribes split from the southern tribe of Judah. So the northern kingdom of Israel was ruled by in Samaria, and the southern kingdom of Judah was ruled in Jerusalem. Well, Israel went into apostasy, and the Lord got angry with them and let them go into captivity by the Assyrian Empire. Well, not many, not many know it, but the Assyrian Empire also took a chunk of the kingdom of Judah. They tried to take Jerusalem, but they couldn't do it. The Lord smote them. So, but then, years later, the, uh, the Babylonians will come. Now the children of Judah, they didn't want to rely upon the Lord. No, they sent gifts, you know, gold and silver to the uh, king of Egypt. And if you know anything about Egypt, Egypt was full of false heathen gods. Osiris, Set, um, maybe you've heard of the Egyptian Book of the Dead. It's a big classic among the occult people. Well, occult means hidden. It's not really hidden anymore. But, um, and God was like, oh, you want to go to Egypt? Well, I'm going to show you what Egypt's going to do for you. So he sent the Babylonians to take Judah into captivity for 70 years, where they would return to the land under Ezra and Nehemiah. Israel never returned back to the land and won't until the Messiah returns, who I say is Jesus, who is the Christ. So, with that in mind, let's read Jeremiah chapter 46, verse 1. The word of the Lord came, which came to Jeremiah the prophet against the Gentiles. Now, Gentiles, that's an interesting word. We're told that it means non-Jew. It could mean that. That's one meaning. But the word Gentiles is also the same root word, goyim, which is Hebrew, goyim. Sometimes in the King James Bible it's translated Gentiles. Other times it's translated nations. In Genesis, when God told Abraham he would be the father of many nations, it's the same word that they translate right here as Gentiles. Now, it wouldn't make any sense if God said, Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of many Gentiles. So they use the word nations. But generally, when God, when uh, the King James translators translated the Word of God, they used nations when they were when they were talking about Israel, the nations of Israel or the tribes. And then when they were talking about the heathens, they used the word Gentiles. But that's not always true. So just kind of keep that in mind. And I did a Bible study on Gentiles, so if you go to my search bar, you, you can you can check it out. Matter of fact, it was one sentence, one little sentence, where they used the word Gentiles and nations, same word, in the same sentence, but they translated it two different ways. And I'm not saying it's an error. I'm not saying that. I'm just pointing it out. Sometimes the Lord allows things to be hid, and it's up to us to dig it out. You know, sometimes the Lord hides things from the wicked on purpose. The word of the Lord which came to Jeremiah the prophet against the Gentiles, against Egypt. Now the Egyptians 
and some of the others were of the tribe of Ham. Remember Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth? Well, Ham, uh, his son was cursed, and that was Canaan. And there's a lot of things, theories about what did Ham do, I don't know. That's what it is, it's theories. But the Lord never talks nice about the children of Ham. And one of the children of Ham, uh, some of the grandchildren of Ham, went to Ethiopia. Keep that in mind, because we're going to cover that. Against Egypt, against the army of Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt. The Bible doesn't say very many nice things about Egypt. Which was by the river Euphrates in Karchemish, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, smote in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. And Josiah was a good king. Jehoiakim, not so much. Verse 3. Order ye the buckler and shield, draw near to battle. Harness the horses, and get up, ye horsemen, and stand forth with your helmets. Furbish the fears, spears, and put on the brigandines. Wherefore have I seen them dismayed and turned away back? And their mighty ones are beat, beaten down on our fled apace, and look not back. For fear was round about, saith the Lord. Let not the swift flee away, nor the mighty man escape. They shall stumble and fall toward the north by the river Euphrates. Who is this that cometh up as a flood, whose waters are moved as the rivers? And personally, I believe that God is using this as a figure of speech, that the armies of Nebuchadnezzar are like a flood. Why do I say that? Well, let's take a look. Uh, in Revelation 17, verse 15, And he said unto me, The waters, the waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So evidently, sometimes water is water, and then other times it's a figure of speech. What can I tell you? Back to Jeremiah 46, verse 7. Who is, it that, who is this that cometh up as, as, as a flood, whose waters are moved as the rivers? Egypt rises up like a flood, and his waters are moved like the rivers. And he saith, I will go up and will cover the earth. I will destroy the city and the inhabitants thereof. Come up, ye horses, and rage, ye chariots, and let the mighty men come forth, the Ethiopians. The Ethiopians, they were uh, the children of Ham. Make sure you tell the black Hebrews uh, about the Ethiopians, right? The Ethiopians and the Libyans that handle the shield and the Lydians that handle and bend the bow. For this is the day of the Lord. For this is the day of the Lord of hosts. See, another day of the Lord, right? For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts a day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries. And the sword shall devour, and it shall be satiate, and made drunk with their blood. For the Lord God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Go up into Gilead, and take balm, O virgin, the daughter of Egypt. In vain shalt thou use many medicines, for thou shalt not be cured. Huh. See, God doesn't say very many nice things about Egypt. The nations, same word as Gentiles here. It's funny, it's the same paragraph, same chapter. It'll take the same word and translate it two different ways. The nations have heard of thy shame, and thy cry hath filled the land. For the mighty man hath stumbled against the mighty, and they are fallen both together. The word that the Lord spake to Jeremiah the prophet, how Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, should come and smite the land of Egypt. Declare ye in Egypt, and publish in Migdal, and publish in Noph and Taphanes. Say ye, stand fast and prepare thee, for the sword shall devour round about thee. Why are thy valiant men swept away? 
they stood not, because the Lord did drive them. He made many to fall, yea, one fell upon another, and they said, Arise, let us go again to our own people, and to the land of our nativity, for the oppressing sword. They did cry there, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is but a noise. He hath passed the time appointed. In other words, his time's over. As I live, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts, surely as Tabor is among the mountains, and as Carmel by the sea, so shall he come. O thou daughter dwelling in Egypt, furnish thyself to go into captivity. See, part of Israel um, and of Judah, they went to Egypt seeking refuge, and they were told not to go there. O thou daughter dwelling in Egypt, furnish thyself to go into captivity, for, for Nof shall be waste and desolate without an inhabitant. Egypt is like a very fair heifer, but destruction cometh. It cometh out of the north. Well, that's Babylon. Also her hired men are in the midst of her like fatted bullocks. For they also are turned back and are fled away together. They did not stand, because the day of their calamity was come upon them, and the time of their visitation. The voice thereof shall go like a serpent, for they shall march with an army and come against her with axes as hewers of wood. I don't know if you know it, but an axe, a battle axe, that's an inc that was an incredibly devastating weapon. It was slower than a sword, but when it hit, it crushed. I mean, it would, a battle axe would just crush a shield, whereas a shield could deflect a sword. So uh, the Vikings were big with battle axes. Matter of fact, God said that Israel was uh, his battle axe. Let's take a look at that real quick. Okay, that's uh, Jeremiah chapter 51, uh, verse, uh, we'll start 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of my of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. So we're talking about Jacob, we're talking about Israel. Verse 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. So Israel was God's battle axe. But not in this instance, necessarily. All right, back to Jeremiah 46, verse 23. Uh, they shall cut down her forest, saith the Lord, though it cannot be searched, because they are more than the grasshoppers and are innumerable. The daughter of Egypt shall be confounded. She shall be delivered into the hand of the people of the north. That's the Babylonians. The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saith, Behold, I will punish the multitude of no. Hmm. That was my daughter's first word. No. She must have thought her name was no. Jessica, no! Uh... Her second word was mine. And then she learned how to use them together. No, mine! Yeah. How would you like to have a name? Uh, no. The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saith, Behold, I will punish the multitude of No and Pharaoh in Egypt with their gods, their gods, and their kings, even Pharaoh, and all them that trust in him. And their gods are the fake gods, right? And I will deliver them into, into the hand of those that seek their lives, and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of his servants, and afterward it shall be inhabited, as in the days of old, saith the Lord. But fear not thou, O my servant Jacob, and be not dismayed, O Israel. For behold, I will save thee from afar off, and thy seed, or children, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return. Well, Israel never returned to the northern land, so this has to be future. And Jacob shall return and be in rest in, 
and at ease, and none shall make him afraid. Yeah, that's when Christ returns. Fear thou not, O Jacob, my servant, servant, saith the Lord, for I am with thee. For I will make a full end of all the nations whither I have driven thee. But I will not make a full end of thee, but correct thee in measure. Yet will I not leave thee holy, well, holy as in completely, uh, yet will I not leave thee holy unpunished. So God's going to punish them. He's going to scatter them among the nations. And he's going to gather them together one day. All right, so this is the uh, end of part four of Jeremiah chapter 46, commentary. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. That's Jesus who is the Christ. In Jesus' precious name, amen.